Welcome to Draft Sickos on the No Ceilings NBA podcast feed and YouTube channel. I am your host, Maxwell Baumbach, and joined at this time by the real star of the show, Stephen Gillespie. Stephen, how are you doing tonight? Man, I'm doing good, Maxwell. I just had a, a good, fun weekend. Uh, just went to the sub ball yesterday in my area, mm-hmm. so wife and I got to get dressed up like uh, like we were in prom again and, uh, <laughs> you know, got to go out, you know. Grandma came in and watched the baby, nice. so we got a hotel room like right off the river. It was a it was a fantastic time. I got to drink and dance a little bit. So beautiful. Don't get too many of those nights, man. It was a no, good time. How about you? Not, How about your anymore. weekend? It was great. We, uh, uh, my daughter is getting to the age where she's like really into any sort of moving vehicle, so like trains, yep. all that, trucks, all that stuff. So we decided to go on a train ride for the first time. So what? we, uh, yeah, it was great. So we took like just the metro like four stops uh just so that she could get on a train a little bit she loved it had the time of her life went out uh did not plan we were going to eat beforehand and then like conveniently one of my wife's favorite restaurants that's quite expensive happened to be right near oh, where we got so off happens. the train it just did so happened the whole thing Gia was there uh n- no the train was my uh-huh. idea but as soon as she was like, let's go to this stop, I should have been like, there mm, it is. Is it mm. because is it because your favorite Italian restaurant's right there with outdoor dining? So if our child is being a little rambunctious, it's going to be OK. <laughs> is that is that why we're picking that stop? But now uh, nail on the head right there. Brother. <laughs> yeah, but it was a blast. We got ice cream afterward. Uh, but yeah, my daughter has not shut up about the train experience. We had the time <laughs> of her life. She loved it. So did that. yesterday. good dad stuff was, right there, man. Key. That's awesome. For sure. So, yeah, it was it was a good time. It was a good weekend. And it's going to be a great show here because we've got... Oh, man. It's the Sicko oh, Bowl. Man. And, and what the, the Sicko, Sicko Bowl is, is, it's credit to Steven for the name, by the way. Um, what we have decided to do is Portsmouth Invitational is this week. I love Portsmouth. Portsmouth is my favorite. So if you're like newer to the draft space or you're someone who's just kind of like, I always use the phrase like air dropping in, like NBA season's getting to a close, uh, you know, we're getting to the end of the regular season here. If your team's not in the playoffs, you might be like, all right, let's let's brush up on draft stuff. The Portsmouth Invitational is the first of the like combine style draft events of the draft cycle. And what it is, it's an event exclusively for seniors and now graduates. It used to be seniors. Now it's guys who are out of college eligibility, basically. Um, yep. And you get the best of those guys. Some guys turn it down, like your, your Dalton Connects, your Kevin McCuller. It's like your, your really big names turn it down. Um, But it's still a really good field. And I think part of that is we've seen guys really catapult themselves. Like last year, Tumani Kamara, like, ran right through Portsmouth. Like, he ran rough shot on the event. He came out, he was seeking a shot, which had been a concern. But it was really clear, like, physically, he was in a different tier than a lot of guys. Ends up getting drafted, has an awesome season uh, as a rookie for the Trailblazers. And we are also in the midst of Portsmouth announcements still coming in. So Santiago Vescovi is now uh, draft eligible for us. So this changes everything. Yeah. So, so what we're doing is we are drafting um, a, each a team of the guys that we like in, in the upcoming Portsmouth Invitational. The field is largely announced. There's still a few guys that we might miss, which we'll touch on at the end, but most of the guys I think we're kind of mostly interested in are yeah. announced. Thank goodness they just announced Auburn's Jalen Williams like a minute before we went <laughs> right live. Before the show. Love that. Thank you, uh, Portsmouth Selection Committee. Um, but we're going to draft a team. We're going to kind of like account for fit. Like we're going to try to make our teams make sense positionally. Yeah. And then at the end, we're going to talk about some guys that either didn't make our rosters just because the fit wasn't great, but guys that we're still very much interested in that we think could make a mark. But um, we're basically going to talk about the guys in the Portsmouth Invitational that we think are interesting and we're going to do it in a draft format. And we're taking just five people, right? Like if you're exactly. looking for, I know we're draft sickos, but if you're looking for a 12 man roster from this Portsmouth invitational team, then we got some work to do, but right now, yeah. Maxwell, you and I are prepared to do a starting five. Exactly. And some honorable mentions for sure. And if you want to know, like everybody in the field, I've got you covered come Wednesday yep. on the site, there's going to be a full written preview uh, covering every single player in the field. Um, so if there are guys that, 
you know, we don't get to stay tuned. Like you're, you're going to get thoughts on them from us later in the week um, on the written site at no to determine the draft order. Uh, we are going to do a, a coin flip because we tried to do oh. rock, paper, scissors and we could not, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> the, whatever minimal lag there is, was making that next to impossible. So I also kind of screwed this up too. So my wife went to like a coin star machine the other day. So we don't even have a quarter for the coin. Toss. No nickel. We're tossing a nickel here today. <laughs> um, so that that's what we're working with. Um, so we're going to do a heads or tails scenario. Shout out to Tyler nickel, by the way, three point shooter in the transfer portal. Uh, if we're talking nickels and basketball, got to bring up Tyler nickel. Uh, we well, could be dropping dimes. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, Steven, I'm going to let you call it. I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to do the thing where I catch it. And then I go like that and then I'll show the camera whether we've uh, got a heads or tails scenario. So no shiftiness on your yeah, part. Got exactly. It. All right. So All I'm right. going to do the flip. Are you calling heads or tails? I thought you said you were going to do the flip catch we'll it, it and the then call it. Yeah. Okay. All Just right. do it when you catch it. When you catch it, I'll call it. Oh, okay. All right. What I got, got tails. It is heads. Ah, Maxwell. The, so I, I get the first pick. Um, we're going to do snake draft style, if that's cool. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I'm cool that with way. whatever you want to cool. do. Let's yeah. do snake draft style. I think I'm going to draft somebody that you don't expect me to draft number one. Oh, okay. I'm going to take with the first overall pick in the, in the 2024 Sicko Bowl, Sicko Bowl Fort Smith Invitational season. Tournament Draft. I'm going to take Riley Minix for more. Oh, State. so okay. explain I, yourself. Yeah. Um, I want one guy that I know can be like my guy who gets me a bucket. Um, and I think Riley Minix has kind of proved himself to, to be that guy. Um, so Minix was a transfer up from Southeastern, which is a, uh, an AI uh, program <laughs> uh, in Florida. Went to Moorhead State this year um, and had some really nice games against high major competition. He was a guy that like got onto a lot of scouting radars pretty early. Uh, cause seems to saw him play like Alabama and Purdue, and he scored a lot. It was like the most efficient games, uh, but people saw, hey, here's a guy who's six seven. He's two hundred thirty pounds. He's built like a tank. Um, yep. Was a forty percent three point shooter at the NAIA level, um, but is still like a bouncy above the rim athlete. Um, he scored 20.9 points per game, 9.7 rebounds per game, 2.2 assists, 1.3 steals, one block. Uh, shot 63.8% on twos. Um, the three-point percentage did dip a little bit. It was 349 this year, but made almost 84% of his free throws. I, I think there's some reason for concern with Riley Minix. So the, the drawbacks of Riley Minix are that, and this is more talking NBA projection than like sports. Yeah. Right now, Riley Minix, in his role that he played for Morehead State this season was the guy who operated out of the mid post a lot. His NBA role is going to be a lot more like spread the floor as a three point shooter and then attack a close out, um, which because he was their star, like he didn't really get to do it was more like everything had to kind of run through him. So the role is going to look a little bit different. Um, and if he is like a 35% guy, as opposed to like the 40% guy he was before, maybe that's a, a little, a little different. The calculus gets a little bit different as far as like, how efficient he has to be as a shooter. Um, defensively, he's a really good team defender. Um, like he's a good, I should say he makes a lot of plays as a team defender. Um, I thought he drifted a little bit at times in the Illinois game and on the ball, he can be a little bit shaky laterally. Um, that's one of those things that where like, he's so big that I'm like, maybe he like slims down a little bit. And I also think resources are like a really important piece to the conversation here. Like we're talking about a guy who is NAIA and then at an OVC school, like, he has probably not had the type of athletic resources around him that a guy uh, who spent five years at Duke might have, for example. Uh, and I think that matters a lot. Like you look at how Ben Shepard like moved and jumped prior to the NBA combine last year. He was so upright all the time. Like it looked like he was a guy who couldn't jump. And then at the combine, he, uh, he's just running and moving completely differently. Like having those resources does make a big difference. And I think that Riley Minix could be a guy who benefits from that. Um, I, I, I just want my team to have one guy who I know can do a little bit of everything. And he's one of those guys that has it. And I think clearly has like at least a degree of NBA athleticism from like a strength and vertical bounce standpoint. It's just a question of like, is he going to move well enough? Is he going to hit spot up threes? But to me, the way that he stuffed this stat sheet this season 
and that those physical tools make him like one of the more interesting guys in the field. And since I'm looking at this as constructing a roster on a big board scenario, he's, he's below the guy that you're probably going to pick number one uh, with your first pick. But I think for this exercise, he's the guy I would want on my Portsmouth roster first. Yeah, man, that makes sense, Maxwell. Um, I'm glad that you did pick him. I just wasn't prepared for you to pick him. I I yeah. specifically didn't scout a guy because I anticipated you picking him. So <laughs> my analysis on my pick is going to yeah. be a little bit um, more shallow than normally you would see otherwise. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you picked Riley, dude. Uh, I'll, I'll go through my notes on him. Uh, you know, his first real season at the D1 crushed it at, at this level. You're talking about a guy who was in the 93rd percentile in overall offense. 95th on post ups, 84th on spot ups, 93rd on cuts. Like he was, he was amazing across a lot of different levels, dude, especially at his size. And you, you mentioned like he's not just tall, but he's sturdy. And I yeah. think that gives him a good shot um, to really turn heads. I mean, talking about a guy who 35% really isn't the highest level of three point percentage that you're going to see, but the fact that he was able to hit a, re a respectable clip at the D1 level, his real first time up, it, that's something that you want to see. He wasn't really shy about it either. And Maxwell, one thing that I really liked about him was he didn't always like try to finish through contact, even though he had like, I think it was like 20 to 20 dunks on the year. Which yeah, is a lot of dunks pretty good. in like 73.4% of the room in the half court, which like I, I get it. It's the OVC, but like what else do you want? Like Exactly, exactly. And when he did get a little bit of shy of physicality, his fadeaway is just so pretty, dude. Like, he squares up. He gets really good lift on it for not being a real poppy athlete. He's still got great lift on his fadeaways, man. It was just – it almost looked like a video game whenever he was hitting a fadeaway. I'm really impressed with you, though, man, going number one pick. You're getting a guy who dropped 20 points per game. You know, that's, that's, that's big time, man. So that does shift my pick a little bit, again, okay. because I, I wasn't anticipating – him being available okay, but yeah yeah since he is and i got snake draft right so i get two yep, picks you in, get a row, two in a row right? you get two in a row. oh man you you might have messed up a little bit but i know with... i'm trying to be <laughs> trying to trying to do the right thing okay okay all right well since you went score i gotta go i feel like i'm gonna zag a little bit and i'm gonna go with a pair of wings who can both score now right like they're both capable mm -hmm. scores but they're pretty nasty on the defensive end the first one i'm gonna go i'm gonna take our guy Jalen Williams yep. out of Auburn. Yeah. I feel like that was the guy that you were anticipating me going with here. He's and he's so, the highest ranked player on my board of the Portsmouth participants. To be completely clear on that, like NBA team construct, I think he's probably the best prospect in the tournament going into this. Where do you have him on your board? Uh, like just outside the second round. Okay, I have and him like, a little bit lower. Realistically, he might be higher depending on how many guys like don't declare that I'm kind of hedging on. So. I have him and my next guy both in the 90s, so they're both like right there. But Jalen Williams, man, a really big athletic guy, a guy who's been on NBA radars for the past few seasons now, um, measures out at about, what, 6'7 to 6'8. Yeah. Big, sturdy frame. Shot nearly 40% from the three-point line this season, Maxwell. So on, a, on an Auburn team that has kind of – a, there was a pretty deep team this year, I would mm -hmm. say, think in terms of name and production – him really rising to the top of that um, real NBA athlete, real long NBA athlete, love the defense, loves the, the way that he can kind of like mirror the footwork of a ball handler. Mm -hmm. He's really strong, scales up and down the lineup. I think a real two through four defender, if everything goes right, just really impressive, um, you know, physique, finishing through contact. Um, I don't have any of my synergy metrics or anything mm -hmm. right off the top of my head, Maxwell. So if you can look those up for yeah, me while, sure. he, while we're doing this, but yeah, I mean, he's, mm -hmm. I would imagine just without looking, I would imagine that he's a good, that he's a good cutter according to synergy. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that the spot up, he's got to be doing really well this yep. year. Yeah. 78th well. percentile spot up 92nd on cuts. Exactly. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. He, so just the type of dude that you want, like in the, so NBA context, right. You got a guy who's going to be a, a three and D guy, and he's got a real chance of bringing both of those things. You know, Max, what we talk about one guy's like really heavy three, but because he's tall, maybe he can be a good defender or, mm -hmm. well, he's a really good defender. If he just learns how to get the shot together, maybe he could kind of string it along again. I don't have him draftable, but depending on who declares and things like that, 
I think that it it's not out of the question for him to be like an a priority a priority undrafted free agent when when draft night yeah. comes around. So here's like a context in which I've thought about. I did like a little bit of data work on him for the Portsmouth article, and I feel like I'm gonna. Uh, he's. I'm probably gonna have him hire a dirty dancer. The don'ts, please don't go to AK, OKC. Uh, comment. <laughs> so my thing with Jalen Williams is a guy like Seth Lundy was like picked in the 40s last year, and yep. like Jalen Williams might. He's not the as willing of a three point shooter as Lundy was, but like the role was a little bit different. Exactly. But he might just be like bigger and better at everything than Seth Lundy was. Like I think that's a possibility. Yeah. So like he's he's a good rebounder. Um, yeah, it was 39.5% from three this year. The jump, this jumper like looks a little funky. The percentages have been up and down, but I'm, I think I'm buying the jumper a little bit because he took what felt like tougher threes this year. Like it felt like he was contested on a heavier amount of them, which synergy confirms, um, like further behind the line. Like I, I think the shot has like really gotten there. Um, and he's one of those guys who really pops on any sort of like dunks and threes type of yes. metric. Like he is a very above the rim athlete he's very strong yeah 71.8 percent at the rim so another one of these like awesome finishers and then you talked about the the defense and the footwork and the mirroring and things like that i love how tight he can play smaller guys like a lot of these big guys that you talk about defending down the lineup oftentimes it's oh yeah because he's like he's got length or whatever and jalen does have that length but he's also like just strong and like trusts his feet and will play really tight on guys so i like that about him too i think this is an excellent pick um still a guy firmly considered it number one you might have me regretting it a little bit right now but maybe that's them's the breaks uh so who are you going with for your for your second pick all right so for my second pick i don't think i'm going to catch you off guard with him either um a, a guy who's been on draft radars for for a couple seasons he's been mired by injury a little bit but i'm going to go ahead and go isaiah crawford here maxwell what do you think about that pick oh no that was like key really? to my team's identity <laughs> I mean, he's I mean, the fact that you wanted him there and the fact that I got him this high, he was going to be my number one pick because I thought mm-hmm. you were going to go Jalen Williams here. But mm-hmm. I, I went with Isaiah. So he's in the 68th percentile in total offense. He's had 20 plus possessions in all categories recognized by Synergy minus handoffs right so Mm -hmm. in the lowest one of those are the miscellaneous category where you really can't put him in one and he's graded out as an average he's only failed to score in double figures in five games this season two of those he played 15 minutes the rest of them were against mcneese state louisiana and utep i love his frame too man so the fact that i'm able to get jalen williams and isaiah crawford that that really kind of rounds up the identity that i wanted right especially with you going riley i want to go three and D wings, people who are NBA level athletes. I mean, this guy shot 40% from deep two seasons in a row now, Maxwell. He's a little bit of a like negative assist to turnover ratio guy, but I don't think yeah. that's really like a processing thing. I yeah. think that's really like the the team around him type thing. And the fact that so he measures out at about six six to six seven. The team that he plays for has to get kind of creative on both sides of the ball to where they have a decent bit of the offense run through him. And then defensively, he kind of does a lot of help, but plays like the four and the five. And ideally on a rotation, I think that he's going to be another one of these guys, similar to Jalen Williams, like a two through four to defender. Um, I think the ball skill is decent for where you want in like a complimentary level wing. But overall, uh, he can kind of get himself into trouble a little bit when he does, when he's asked to kind of create a little bit more. Um, but the thing is, is when he does handle the ball, he's kind of a split between the left and the right side of the court. He's essentially 50, 50 on wherever he wants to attack the floor. So I think that's going to help my offense out him and Jalen playing off of each other. I got two NBA level physiques. I got two guys who shot around 40%. And I think guys who can cover up and down the lineup. And if they need to, with the ball in their hand, they can make a couple of plays. I'm not worried about these guys getting chased off the line for two sure. really good rebounders as well. That's the other thing too. I, I like Crawford a lot. Like Crawford is a, a stat sheet stuff for Supreme. Like the two things exactly. that I wrote in my article about him is like, one, this is a guy that you can't run a Bartorvik query like without running into. If you're looking at just yes. like multifaceted production. Um, I agree with you totally on the assist to turnover ratio. Like, I just think this is a guy when he's in a more connective role and not like 
a guy who's being swarmed in the mid post. And it's a similar mm-hmm. thing with Riley Minix. Like, I think it looks a lot better. Um, I also wrote that I think there's a chance Isaiah Crawford is this year's like bizarro Craig Porter. Okay. And that, like Craig Porter went to Portsmouth last year. And I think there's been like revisionist history where people are like, Craig Porter went to Portsmouth, killed it, got the two way. Like Craig Porter. Everyone was, like, was going to get him. Yeah. He was, he was fine at Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. Like Craig Porter was not awesome at Portsmouth. Like go look at the number. Like he was, he was pretty good. But I think what Portsmouth did for Craig Porter was it got him in front of a lot of NBA teams. Uh, probably got to interview with a lot of them, but also just like made teams look at the stat sheet and be like, oh my goodness, like what, who is this guy and what is this? Isaiah Crawford had a 5.8 block rate and a 3.8 steal rate. Like those are bonkers numbers. He's six 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 seven. He's got long arms. I don't know the wingspan. I'm, I'm, we're going to get it. I'd imagine it's at He's least long, six dude. ten. It's got to be at least six He's ten. I bet long. six eleven. Um, and I, I think I thought he moved better this year. Like in past years, he had like what I'll call like the stone cold Steve Austin bulky neck br- like leg brace on, where like he had that knee brace that looked like it weighed thirty pounds on his leg. That's off. He's yes. moving a little bit better. He is a really tentative shooter. Um. He took the most he's ever taken this year, 3.1 per game. Like, I'm still a little hung up on that with him. We'll see with how that looks uh, and what it's like on higher volume. But I think this is a great pick. This is a guy I want. Two years in a row at 40%, though, man. I mean, That's there's the a little is- bit of credence to think that it's that it's real, even though it is low volume. And I think, again, Roll has a lot to play on that because who is the guy on on his team that's setting him up for those open looks? You know what I mean? So I think mm-hmm. that he that's a little bit of, like, like – role necessity type thing for sure um let's go with um my next pick here Uh i want to get my big man spot out of the way so i can like start to build around it i'm gonna and this is uh, yeah what i'm gonna contradict myself for a moment i'm gonna take drew pember from unc Asheville. okay um i love drew pember um i covered him during no stone unturned he is a 6'11 big man, played two seasons at Tennessee, did nothing. Transfers to UNC Asheville and has like three really good seasons in a row. Yep. 20.6 points, 8.2 boards, 3.5 assists, just under two blocks and a steal per game. Um, over the last three years, he is a 37% three-point shooter. Um, and he gets respect out on the perimeter. Like this is not the case of like a big guy who's just being left completely alone at the top of the key. Um, he's also an 84.3% three point, uh, free throw shooter on really high volume. Uh, he's a tremendous passer. Like those 3.5 assisted 2.7 turnovers. Like this is a guy that is like kind of tailor made for modern NBA offense. If you're having him zooming, if you're having him run handoffs, if you're having him pick and pop, like there's a lot of NBA style actions that he's going to be able to execute pretty quickly. Um, and with that shot, like he gets to the free throw line a ton. 9.1 9.1 free throw attempts per game last year, 8.2 per game last year. He's really skinny, um, but the ball skills are great. So because teams have to come and close out on him, he's really good at faking uh, and then just driving downhill and getting to the free throw line. Like he is a great foul drawer, which is a skill as much as people don't like it. Um, yep. Defensively, he's a he's a good rim protector. Like he's got really good instincts around the rim. He he's pretty bouncy. They played him a little more as like a four ish like this year in certain lineups. So his block percentage dipped a little bit, um, but it's been as high as eleven point three in college, which is a, a tremendous mark. Um, I'm drafting him as my big man here, but I will okay. say in the NBA, I think he's a jumbo four that I would yeah. probably never play at the five. Um, he weighs 215 pounds and in games where he's faced like other big physical centers, he struggled with foul trouble because he has a hard time staying vertical, uh, through his chest. He has struggled with turnovers a lot. Um, but I also wonder how much the turnover thing is just like teams being like, let's just gang up on the one really good player on UNC Asheville. Um, yeah. cause that was a problem for him, but like he, he needs to, he needs to play a lot stronger with the ball at the NBA level, like period point blank. That's got to change. Um, so like there are some drawbacks for Pember. Um, but I think anytime you can get a guy that's six eleven, that's fluid through his feet, that can jump, that's got good hips, that can really sling the ball. Like this is just too enticing of a guy for me to pass up here. So that's what I'm going with with my uh, with my second pick. I I like him, man, and I like kind of the vibe that I'm getting from your team. Uh, first off, because these are the two guys that are featured on our thumbnail. So you have the all thumbnail <laughs> team. Right. Yeah. So 
So that's a, that's great. Mm-hmm. And I like the offensive versatility that you're bringing and mm-hmm. you're you are creating a really good identity. And don't forget, man, Drew Pember last season had like this clash of the Titans mass matchup against Taylor Hendricks, too. And I think that, yeah. that was that was a big game for his resume. Um, the fact that he was able to put up those numbers. Granted, he's an upperclassman. You kind of expect those things. But at the same time, the fact that he went up against an NBA player now in Taylor Hendricks and was able to have the performance that he had, that's just another feather in his cap. And I think it's also pointing to the fact, too, now, if you look at the transfer portal, I think that a lot of people are going to knock him a little bit, but he did already transfer, right? Like, this is a previously Mm -hmm. transferred athlete coming from Tennessee, going to a kind of a lower major conference and year after year having team scout for him specifically for him and the fact that he's able to put up the numbers that he is it's just fantastic so maxwell i believe that you have your third pick coming up next yep. who are you going to so select we, pick before five? the third pick i'm going to make everybody wait because we are going to take a quick break All right. So with my third pick, I wish I was like a little bit more confident in what I was doing here. (laughs) Um, You know what? I've got, I'm, I'm buying the Riley Minnick shot. I think I've got some good shooting. Uh, There's two guys I'm kind of torn between here and they're both like probably only power forwards. So I want to be, I think I know where you're going. Um, Let's go with let's go with Enrique Freeman. Let's get funky. Oh, okay. So Enrique Freeman uh, is a guy who I I did a, a little thing on him. I did this piece like, like a month or two ago called "Follow the Leaderboard," where I just wrote about like statistical leaders uh, in the NCAA. He was a guy that popped up on that from Akron. Um, 18.6 points per game, 12.9 rebounds mm. per game for Enrique Freeman. So he is a phenomenal, phenomenal rebounder. Uh, he's only like six, seven and he's listed at two Oh seven, which I think the weight seems low to me. Yeah. Like, I would he bet he weighs more than that. Uh, like he looks bigger than it too. Um, just a force on the glass and defensively, like another like genuine multi-positional defender. Like he can scale down the lineup uh, he was an all Mac uh, defensive team guy uh, each of the past four seasons uh, slides his feet. Well, good ground coverage has good balance shows some pop is like a weak side rim protector. Um, the offensive game is pretty rudimentary. It's a lot of just like dive to the basket and dunk and like getting putbacks and things like that. He never really shot threes at all prior to this season. And this year he only took 1.5 per game, but he made 37% yeah. of them. So I think from an NBA standpoint, like this is a guy that I'm eyeing with like an exhibit 10 two way potential style contract. And I'm thinking like, can I just get this guy to shoot? Because if he does, then I've got this like kind of Swiss army knife defensive four, who's going to be a pain on the glass. He's going to play with the highest motor you've ever seen. And then if he can just like, make an open shot it's fine like that's all i need him to be able to do um good free throw shooter this year 72.8 percent. nothing crazy but high volume um the ball skills leave a lot to be desired too like this is not a guy who you're going to run any offense through uh you don't necessarily want him dribbling a whole lot not the greatest decision maker in the world that kind of plays like a post-up game like there are things that like need to be worked out but i think that when you have a guy who like has these kind of physical tools and plays this hard, that it's sort of worth the swing. And then within my roster construction, I think it helps have a guy next to Pember. That's like another guy that's going to just like be tough and be on the glass in case Pember is struggling with his physicality at all. I think that's interesting. And I was actually thinking about that too. When you were, you know, when you picked him, I'm looking at the fact that you got Drew Pember on your team, Maxwell, you got Riley Minix. Enrique is going to be your four yep. on this team, right? Yep. So He's you got be those guys. Okay. All right. So Riley has like, Riley is going to have to be locked up by He's, either Jalen yeah. or Isaiah for me. Uh huh. And I think, so, I, and, I, and I think Freeman can like guard the other teams three, if I need him to like, if Minix is like lateral agility is not looking what I needed to, I think I can slide Enrique to the three and I feel fine about oh, that. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that, man. I, I like Enrique is just kind of like a, a game wrecker. I think that that's a really good role. And I think that this the, your roster construction actually makes sense in how NBA teams are going to want to try to scout each one of your guys, too, for how they transition up to the next level. So that makes a lot of sense. All right, Maxwell. So pick six, I feel like I'm cheating. I feel like I am just – I feel like I'm just – you know, taking candy from a baby, so to speak, it, yeah. because the highest ranked player on my board fell all the way to six, mm-hmm. and I'm taking him. Maxwell, you know that I'm a big fan of this guy. I got to go ahead and take Joel Soriano, dude, out of St. Yeah. John's. I mean, mm-hmm. he's – I feel like he's falling through the cracks, man. Like, Maxwell, before I even get into my, my breakdown and how not only does he fit in the NBA but on this team, can you explain why he's not getting really, like, any – draft buzz at all yeah i think part of its age which is like going to be a conversation with a lot of these guys yeah. so soriano is like what i call like a double graduate like he did a postgrad year in high school and now he's a graduate player coming out of st john's um i think a lot of it is just like how teams view the backup center position like i think a lot of teams mm-hmm. want like let's use the example of a guy who blew up last year trey jemison like they want a guy who's like be huge and block shots and dunk. Yeah. <laughs> I think they like that. And like Soriano's not small, but like Jemison was like 270. Like Jemison was enormous. Um, I think they want just like, hey, give me a defensive anchor or a really high skill offensive player. And Soriano's like not really either. Like he's, but he's effective. Like he he's going to do the stuff that like you're going to talk about a little bit. I just think with Soriano, he's almost hurt by not having like, an identity of an archetype that we see in the NBA a lot. Yeah. So as I was watching his film today, just kind of like refreshing, getting ready for this exercise, this isn't going to be a sexy sell, but I still think that it's got, it has NBA staying power. Picture, picture DeMarcus cousins without the ball handling and without like, I actually, I really only, I think think he can shoot. I think Soriano I think he could shoot because he always makes long there. twos. And I wrote about this yep. when I covered him for No Stone. Like he made a couple of the series this year, but he's always been like a forty six percent long two shooter. Like he's always been really good on those. He shot forty one percent this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you take the ball skill out of Demarcus Cousins, and he's so and Demarcus actually was a, a, a better vertical threat too. But if you take like I don't know seventy five percent vertical threat for demarcus and the lack of the ball skill i think that's not too far off from where soriano is right now man mm-hmm. like he's got he's got good post moves right he's got good size he's listed at 6 11 250 he might be an inch smaller he might be around that 250 to 260 frame but i mean you're talking about a guy who is 95th percentile in offense overall 82nd in post-ups 92nd on the roll 62nd on putbacks. He had an offensive rebound percentage of 14.2, defensive rebound of 23.2. So pro pro level rebounding numbers, especially for the center position, right? A 6.6% block percentage. Again, like really good. 55.3 free throw rate. He was seven of 16 from, from three this year, Maxwell, which is where that, that mm-hmm. three point percentage comes from. But he's also a 70% three-point shooter or free throw Always shooter on his career. Yeah, yeah last so like, three years, he's made his free throws on high volume. Very good touch. He's very strong, a very suitable build for a rotational big man. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Like, I'm not talking about him being a starter or anything like that, mm-hmm. right? I love his screen setting. He creates good separation yeah. for the ball handler and also carves out, like, really good lanes for himself. I wish he had, like, 3 to 5% a uh, higher lift on his lobs because he is a very under the basket big man mm-hmm. and he does get a lot of lobs and he does convert them. It's just that he, most of them are, most of them are layups, right? Like he dunks, on these he lobs, dunks a he does little dunk. more than you would think, but yeah. yeah, but it's also a lot of like, yeah, he's not like the most vertically explosive guy. And that's why the shot blocking numbers are more like, okay, than great. Yeah. And we got a comment in here too. That's funny. So 24 seconds says, so he's in his canter. Would you not Jeff? Would you not draft Enos Canner in the second round? I mean, <laughs> would you? Would you well, that's not the thing draft- is like we're talking about is like an undrafted guy. So it's like if you get modern and his freedom off the scrap heap, yeah, like that's without fine. the like, fox, without the Fox News career path and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff, right? Like, yeah, just getting a, a dude that loves basketball, right, and who has done it for 
a, a good amount. I mean, I would draft Enos Cantor in the second round, right? Like, I, sure, and that's yeah. my thing is like Joel Soriano is really good, dude. Like, mm-hmm. he he does have good shot. He has good patience and decisiveness in the paint. He has higher assists than turnovers, 47 30 to 37. So his processing is 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 there, right? Only six steals. So that shows kind of like the limitations athletically that mm-hmm. we were talking about with like to the Demarcus Cousins comp. And that hurts like the uh, stocks to foul ratio that I talk about a little bit. He's gonna be a drop big. Like it's he's gonna he's not very good on the switches and things like that, but he's good in post matchups and he's good in a straight line. I have him 69th on my board right now. So like I've I even have him like as a priority undrafted free agent. But of all the people that are listed on on our, you know, Portsmouth invitational rosters that we have, mm-hmm. he is easily number one for me. I think I think that's completely reasonable. Um I yeah, I, I just like where I come back with him is just like basically what I mentioned. Like I I, I worry about like if he carves out an identity, I do think to your point, I think he has like real like innings eater value. If that makes yes. sense. Like, I think he's the guy that like won't get killed. Um, and like a certain point that's worth more than like an idea of a guy or a guy that will get you killed on the court. Um, I, I think he's like a little lighter on his feet than I realized. I just worry about him like staying above board defensively. And then like the offensive game is so just like put back oriented that if he is below water on defense, I, I then just worry about like, well, what am I getting? Like at that point, is it a situation where maybe I just go with a guy who's like either bigger or like a little more offensively skilled. And I think that makes sense too. And like, again, he's not a bad athlete. It's just that he, and he does get a lot of lobs and he's got a good amount of dunks on the year, but he's just not like one of these guys that's going to, you're going to see patting his head, running back to get set on defense uh, all, all the time. So Maxwell for my next pick, I'm going to get, another kind of bigger guy and uh and this like when i'm building an nba team i typically go down this path I, I value size especially um versatility on both sides of the ball i don't know how mad you're gonna get at me for taking this guy but i gotta go kevin cross dude I really okay feel like- i i kind of screwed myself he was so he was the guy i was thinking about when i took freeman okay. um but i thought i'm gonna go more like rim protection-y than like skill ball uh yeah if you cross is awesome like i i really thought hard about cross at several different points he's great you you could have got enrique freeman on your next pick too by the way like sure i'm sure i could have yeah (laughs) yeah it really wasn't like dying to get him but yeah so kevin cross man like he is interesting to me because and i feel like i can kind of take a swing on him because defensively in maxwell like he shows some fun stuff, but I don't know how much I'm buying into the defense. You know what I mean? Fine, like yeah. it's it's hit and miss. There's highs and lows. I think like especially if they're if we're looking at Portsmouth matchups, like five on five, I think that he's got passable defense, especially mm-hmm. with you know the the way that the ro- the rosters are breaking down, right? So coming out of Tulane, he's like a wing forward. I think that my team is pretty switchable now with a uh, Jalen Isaiah Isaiah. And now Kevin, I mean, a 42% three-point shooter on the season. Now, he did have a plus 13% leap from last year to this year. And he's a career 30% shooter from deep. So I don't know how much of the if that percentage is like a false floor. But he took a lot of difficult shots this year, too, if that means mm-hmm. anything into how people evaluate prospects, right? He's in the 90th percentile in total offense, including assists. So he's a good playmaker, too. So I have, like some answer ancillary playmaking pretty much all over the court. Now um, he's in the 87th percentile on spot ups, as you would imagine with that three point percent in the 85th and ISO. How about he was in the 65th percentile as a role man too. So I have another guy who I can run some pick and roll action with too. I think that he's very balanced on the offensive end Tulane, much like how I was talking about with um, Isaiah Crawford. Tulane has a very funky lineup rotation too, where like, in one possession, Maxwell, you can see him set a screen, run off of an off-ball screen, handle the ball in the pick and roll, or and hit the cutter, or just pull up and hit a three. Right, like there's mm-hmm. like no shortage of things that this guy could do on offense this this year. He can get a little bit of tunnel vision whenever he is trying to create with the ball in his hand, which I do need to address. Uh, I I have a lot of ice cubes in my drink right now, Maxwell. I'm lacking <laughs> the proverbial straw. But I think mm-hmm. that the guard position is probably one of the deeper 
uh, yeah, positions of, a lot of, of the class, which is why I think that you and I both are just like, let's save Putting the point off. guards yeah. for last. Yeah, exactly. I think that he's a solid athlete, but he's not like super explosive. Um, he can get up over the defense um, a little bit on the pick and roll action, but his fight to get back in the play is kind of waxes and wanes, which he could be a little bit of a victim of the uh, – he does a lot on offense. Maybe we're not asking him to do too much defensively. And playing next to Sion James, like, those two had a lot of really fun actions together. So, really, Maxwell, I'm looking at my team right now. I got my enforcer in the paint. I got my 3 and D – um versatile wings i'm gonna i i was going between him and i might have surprised you if if he falls outside i got i he was he'll be my first mention in the honorable mentions okay and uh with Jalen williams declaring today i think that really helped me out for um, sure with with the construction of my team today but yeah man i went uh i went kevin cross what do you think about that selection i like it a lot yeah i i like kevin cross a lot i did a uh, a more stones unturned piece for no ceilings plus uh for the start of the year he was the guy I covered during it um just so so skilled like another stat sheet stuff for like 17.5 points 7.3 rebounds 4.6 assists six foot eight moves pretty well i think the question like you yeah. mentioned, it's just gonna be the defense like he moves okay I think his worst defensive moments were like when he was the five because they played pretty yes. small this year. And like, that's mm-hmm. just not going to be what he's going to be asked to do in the NBA. So then it, it turns to like, is he going to be quick and strong enough to deal with NBA fours? And then it turns on offense to like, is he going to be able to keep the defense honest from deep? I think it helps a lot that like, he actually has a handle. Like he can put the yes. ball on the floor really well. Um, he sees the floor well too. He's got that yeah. connective passing. Unbelievable passer. So I think yes. like you can short roll him. You can run him through handoffs. Like you can do a lot of stuff with Kevin Cross that's like going to provide value to the offense. Um, and he's a, he's a just a really smart player. Um, very interesting. I think like where he kind of settles athletically and with the shot is going to kind of swing where where teams fall about him. But a guy I, I really considered high, and I probably should have taken high instead of panicking about if Drew Pember is is too weak. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> let's do the eighth pick since you're going so forward heavy. I feel like I need to also like you have a ton of size out there. Um, okay. So I'm going to take another forward and then we'll do our final break. Uh, no, we'll, yeah, let's just go through it and then we'll talk yeah. about snubs in the last segment. Um, I'm going to go with Malafe Leons. Uh, I knew it from Bradley. Uh, so he's a guy that, that I actually had the pleasure of interviewing uh, liked him a lot. Guy who loves basketball, uh, which is good. Um, but a guy that I, I've been like fairly interested in for a while and then came away pretty high on after my last uh, kind of film dive on him. So he, uh, 13.8%, uh, I'm sorry, 13.8 points per game this past year, uh, 7.1 rebounds, 1.3 assists, 1.7 turnovers. Another guy where like, kind of like Enrique Freeman, like the ball skill stuff is like a little shaky. Don't love the handle. Don't love the passing. It's fine. It's nothing crazy. Um, but he's a guy who can knock down like open shots pretty well, like, 36 percent three-point shooter leon's is a guy where all he needs to do is just be able to knock down spot up threes that's uh, it because he is six foot nine mm-hmm. he is incredibly long and my goodness does this man play defense he is a menace defensively he moves through on his feet so like he can guard down pretty well like i thought when i was toying with roster construction today i was like i think depending on how my team shakes out like i might be able to play him at the two and like yeah because like, he, he's he moves quick speed pretty well yeah so yeah. um but he's like really helpful uh defensively like he gets into a lot of stuff around the basket as a helper um like one of those like i, I call guys like this lazy punishers where it's like up oh, you dribbled and you turned your back on a guy you shouldn't have done that that's lazy like he's gonna take that he threw a lazy pass he'll get to it um but like yeah like excellent nose for the ball everywhere 2.7 steal rate five percent uh block rate and like always been that guy, like always just been a phenomenal, phenomenal defender. The question is just like, is he going to provide enough offensive value? Um, I think he got better as a cutter. He got better at like finding opportunities on the offensive glass this season. Um, he's a guy who has a little bounce to him. I would like him to fill out his frame a little bit um, just to be a little bit stronger. But I really think he's one of those guys that like, if he can just knock down the open three here and there, like he's going to have a rotation spot for, for a long, long time. Yeah. I, I like him, man. I, one, the interview that you did with him was was great, man. And you can just tell by listening to him how much he enjoys the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, very smart guy, very cerebral. I think that 
we don't talk about basketball players intelligence probably anywhere near as as mm-hmm. what we should because we talk about like their feats of strength and athleticism things like that but Malfi is like an incredibly intelligent uh, cerebral defender and he's also like made great strides on the offensive end too and I know that in the interview he said that he's working on the shot like that's really the one thing that he's got left to do mm-hmm. if we unlock Maxwell like if I tell you that he's going to be 33% from NBA threes, mm-hmm. how confident are you in him as an NBA player? Fairly confident. I think he's probably got to be closer to league average just because like, he's not like a great, like chase off the line, like ball handler type guy. Um, but I think if he gets to like 35, 36 year in business, like long-term, yeah. like serious business, I was going to work my way up to that 35 mm-hmm. to 36 range. But yeah. I, I even think 33, you, you're you're talking door. me into yeah he's yeah. like easy two way guy right mm-hmm. but if he gets set 35 and I think that everyone's like well what about 37 38 like that takes a lot man that's like, a lot yeah someone and it who can happen shoot. like it can and I wouldn't say he can't shoot because like he's been like 36 percent's not terrible and great free throw shooter too like just a smidge under 80 yeah. percent through college so like I think I like it's totally workable um I, and I'm gonna pull up like like the catch and shoot numbers were this year because I think the catch and shoots are pretty solid I think he it was like one of those situations where you may have had to take a couple like, Hey, I, I didn't really want to take that triple pull up. So yeah, 39.5 on catch and shoots and 41.2% on the unguarded catch and shoots. So it's like, you can't leave them open. Yeah. Nothing else. So, and then you get into the whole discussion is like, okay, well, do we give Mal- Malvi the, um, the one three point shot that he's going to get on the 41%? Then mm-hmm. that's a whole nother level of discussion. But yeah, if he does get to that point, at least he's being able to have these discussions had about him as opposed to mm-hmm. probably where like a lot of people have him on their boards now, but I love him, dude. Like one of the best, if not the best defenders in the entire class. And that's saying a lot. And if you got an NBA skill in this year's draft, like you got a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I've got my last pick here. I kind of, I'm trying to think like, do I want to go like a guy that helps my team win or do I just go like best pro prospect i think that um the point of the exercise was to win in a five on five but i also think that like we've been we should the, talk, yeah like i've been going to <laughs> nba prospect heavy i've been, yeah well, i've been so. kind of more focused on that lens too i think i'm gonna throw a curveball at you because i've not seen this guy get a lot of love as a pro prospect oh, and like no. picking this guy is go- i think it's going to hurt like my voting totals on Twitter for sure. Like between the fact that like I've already got don't a lot take of these the like, guy. guys. Don't like, take the guy that I'm going to take. I don't think I'm don't taking the guy you think you're going to take. I'm going to take Talon Cooper from South Carolina. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So Talon is like not an NBA radar, like buzzy name. He's never scored more than 10 points per game. I think he's one of those guys in like, this is a weird comparison to throw up but like you know those like Shaq Harrison style guards that are just like always on an NBA roster somehow yes where it's like they're usually a guy like 10 through 15 and like they're they might never be a guy that you play a ton they might never be a guy that's like on a giant contract for a long time or a guy that you play in playoff games but like they're just good yep I, I like good enough to like be in the league I, I think Talon Cooper might be one of those guys so Talon Cooper is six four, so we're already like great starting point, like real positional NBA size for a guard, and he's a real point guard. He gets into the paint consistently, four point two assists per game to one point two turnovers, and like even at Minnesota, where he's on ball more, like six point three assists per game, like genuine good creator, like knows how to run an offense, doesn't screw up, sees the floor well, has the tools to get inside. And a really excellent three point shooter. Like, even in prior years where the percentage hasn't been like unbelievable, he shoots him from NBA. Um, and he's really good off the catch. Like, he is an excellent off the catch three point shooter. He made 40, almost 46% of his threes this year. Um, and even though like the steal and block rates weren't that great this year, watch South Carolina's last game against Tennessee and watch how he defended Dalton Connect. Mm. Like, they gave him the Dalton Connect assignment, and it's because he's big he's burly he's strong he can stick to a guy on the ball or he can but he's still quick enough that he can chase guys around screens if that's what you need him to do so i see a six four three and d guard that's an excellent decision maker and i get it like he didn't score a lot and guys that don't score a lot in college you know nba hit rate on those isn't awesome 
But to me, he's a lot more interesting than some of these small guards that score a lot of points and can't pass or play defense. Like, I think Talon Cooper is a guy you could put kind of next to anybody, and he still has enough, like, real point guard juice to do the point guard stuff. But if he's off the ball majority of the time, he's going to do that and, and play his tail off on defense on the other end. Smart player, good build, just tailor-made for an NBA role. I love it, man. I love it. So that, okay, so you didn't take the guy that I'm going to take, and I'm still kind of hesitant on whether or not I want to take him based off of your guy. Screw it. I'm just going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, so I was tipped off on this player by a mutual friend of ours and a friend of the program, Nathaniel Miller. He told me that he just talked to you about this guy. Yep. He talked to me today, so I feel like you already know where I'm going to go. Yep. Let's get Dennis Jenkins, dude, out of St. John's. I'm going to go ahead and take him. And now, similarly to to Cooper, right, Dennis Jenkins really isn't like the highest name of all these guards that are in in the mix. But when I'm looking at pro prospects, he's probably a little bit lower down, right? So Mm -hmm. let's talk about – just throw out some names of guys. Aaron Estrada, A.J. Hogard, uh, Mm -hmm. Vescovy, if I wanted to go for a little bit more like supporting cast guard. Mm -hmm um walker out of michigan state like there's a few guards that i've seen and heard about Dennis Jenkins is actually a new commodity for me like sitting down and analyzing his game now he's a teammate of joel soriano so i have a little bit of chemistry already baked sure, in my yeah. team there right so that's helpful but he's 6'3 listed at 165 pounds but when you watch there's him no play way. Maxwell, yeah that's not right when you watch him play he is not afraid of anything like very very fearless right Mm -hmm. um he previously played at uh, pacific and iona um he's i'm kind of surprised by his low free throw rate could you explain that a little bit man because like he's he's in the paint a lot and he's like manipulating around defenses but he doesn't go like straight up into the chest of people a lot so that's probably why yeah yep it's yeah so i i just did my write-up on him the other day um he takes a lot of like bad angles at the rim. Like he takes a lot of like, I didn't quite get where I want. I'm going to drive super wide and I'm going to throw something up. Um, He needs to either like pass those off or like try to just fight to the rim. Like there's way too much, like not quite where I want, but I'm, I'm shooting it. Like there's a little bit too much of that stuff, which like, I think it's fixable. Like Jameer Watkins was weirdly enough, like totally different type of player, but he's a guy who did that a lot when he was at VCU where it's like, I'm driving. I don't like what I got. That's too bad. I'm shooting. <laughs> like, there's Hopefully like, someone there's touches like me. Yeah. Of that. yeah. To Dennis Jenkins. Um, but I do think he's like awesome. And like, yeah. I, he's 15 I, points a game, three yeah. and a half rebounds, five assists over one and a half steals, half a block per game. He shot 44, 35, 85 from the floor, two and a half turnovers per game, two and a half fouls per game. And just li- listen to some of these, dude. Like, he's only in the 54th percentile on total offense. That jumps all the way to the 86th percentile when you include assists. He's in yep. the 74th as a pick-and-roll ball handler, 89th in spot-ups, 81st in handoffs, 87th when it comes to dribble jumpers, right? Mm-hmm. And in the 68th in catch and shoots. So I'm looking at this guy. I love his splits. I love his size. I love his mentality. And then when I'm pairing him with Jalen Williams, Isaiah Crawford, Joel Soriano, again, who's his teammate, and Kevin Cross. I love the makeup of that team, dude. I love the athleticism. I love the positional size. I love the the chemistry that I have between him and Joel. They have experience running those pick and rolls together. He knows exactly where Joel wants them. Oh, and then defensively, he's got a 1.9 blocks percentage and a, a straight up three steals percentage. So he's not a zero on the other side of the floor either, man. Like has some has a little bit of twitch. He's not, I'm not going to sit here and try to sell you that he's like the twitchiest mm-hmm. guard in, in all of the land. Right. But he's definitely, he's definitely a capable baller dude. And I, and I'm glad that I got him to kind of round up my starting or to round up my five here. Yeah. He's really good. I, I think he's probably the guard prospect that um, is a crew. Like we've heard the most buzz on heading into yeah. Smith. Like he just seems like a guy that a lot of people are interested in. Um, and it's, it's like obvious to see why, like he's, like you mentioned, like a really good passer, like really good at just like seeing the entire yep. floor, but also like just fitting the ball through tight windows. Um, I think the shot is like an interesting discussion with him because he was like a 36% three point shooter and like he's never been a great shooter, but he yeah. made like 51% of his pull up twos this year and made 85% of his free throws. So it's like 
a real like late bloomer in terms of just shooting yep. that like maybe that's a guy where you buy the shot the defense rocks um one yep. of those guys who like he's not super vertical but like his timing is just awesome like really good at making rotations and occasionally just like blocking a shot around the cup um aggressive and like still pretty like calculated like knows when to swipe the ball at the point of attack when he can help dig like another guy who's got like we talked about like with Jalen earlier like he's got the feet to, like really play guys tighter than other guys are capable of doing like he's not a guy who like he's he makes a lot of plays but he's not playing defense with the sole intent of making plays like it's not yes. like i'm i i gotta get seals like that's not how he's playing um but he gets them <laughs> yeah yeah so i i like i like dennis jenkins a lot he was like the other guard i thought about with my roster construction i wanted to go to Lon cooper just because i wanted like one guy who i know can like really truly run the show offensively and set the table like first and foremost and i wanted a little bit more shooting just in case like leons and and freeman aren't knocking him down so yeah. Um, wanted to go with him, but yeah, I, th I think he's a really good pick. I think he's probably the most interior. If you like put a gun to my head and you're like, who do you think? And like, and like, this is a situation that happens to us. Sometimes people will put a gun to our head and say like, which, All which pro team. prospect that's a guard at Portsmouth or team's most interested in. I would guess it's, I'd guess it's probably Dennis Jenkins. Um, and hopefully and he you would also, love to tell the tale. Yeah. 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 And I think it's also worth noting, like he had a really successful up transfer season because he was at yeah. Iona. He was like the yep. other guard next to Walter Clayton who did like the playmaking stuff because Clayton like wasn't fully actualized in that front was a better off ball guard. Um, and yeah, like he just kind of slid under the radar and had a really good season at St. John's. So I think he's somebody worth buying in on. Um, so for our starting fives, uh, yes, let's, let's run down your lineup and then we'll run down mine. All right, so at I'll, I'll go one through five. All right, so cool. at the one, Dennis <laughs> Jenkins from Saint Dennis Jenkins from Saint John's. At the two, this is where it could get interesting here. Yeah, let's uh let's say that um let's give Isaiah Crawford the nod at two. Okay. I'll give him the nod at two at six foot six at a, a Louisiana Tech. At the three, let's go. Let's go. Jalen Williams will be listed at the three, about six foot eight out of Auburn. And then at the four, we got Kevin Cross, six foot eight out of Tulane. And then at the five, at six eleven, teammate of Dana Jenkins will go Joel Soriano. That's my five. Awesome. All right. So for mine, at the one we've got Talon Cooper out of South Carolina. At the two, we're going with six foot nine Malafi Leons. <laughs> Uh, at the three, we're going to go with uh, Riley Minix out of Moorhead State. At the four, we're going Enrique Freeman from Akron. And at the five, we're going with Drew Pember. Um, there are a lot of really interesting guys in this field that we didn't get to. So we're going to take a yes. quick break and run through some of our uh, favorite names. So stick with us. We'll be right back. All right, so let's talk about our favorite undrafted. Do you want to do it like positionally? No, I'm just gonna go by who who I like the most. Yeah, um, who else? Who else you got? Yeah, uh, so Jay, again, Jalen Williams like saved my saved my skin because yeah. I I had a feeling that you were probably gonna go either Minix or Crawford if that was the case, maybe mm -hmm. Pember. And I was fully expecting with the way that I was going to build my team, I was going to need some spacing. So I was fortunate that Kevin fell to me when he did, because if he was going to be gone, I was going to take Jamison Battle out of Ohio State. I like Jamison Battle, yeah. I was, and listen, man, like he's he's not the sexiest prospect. He's six mm -hmm. foot seven. You know, again, like all these other guys, he's a senior. He has just been like a co collegiate journeyman who mm -hmm. is – like a career what 36 percent three-point shooter or something yeah like that. and it was like something crazy this year it was like 44 40, and like he's yes. always been like a mid-range assassin like he was one of those guys that was the man at like george mason and then yep. minnesota and like that like hurts your efficiency and then like this mm -hmm. year you see him like in an actual off-ball role for the first time and it's like, whoa like this guy is massive and he can shoot so i i worry about the defense with him Oh, absolutely. Like, There's like no defensive metrics assigned to yeah, his name. It's, it's tough. But anytime a guy is that big and can shoot, I think it's a case of like, maybe we just figure that out. Like maybe we just hope that we bring this guy Hopefully in. Hopefully you turn into minivan, better. right? Yeah. Sure, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. um, I'll throw one out there. So another guy I thought about quite a bit um, 
was the guy I actually just interviewed was Quincy Oliveri, uh, okay. out of Xavier. Um, I think like we've talked a lot about that, like just off ball scoring role that like a lot of teams yes. could use. And I think Oliveri is like one of those guys where like he is first off, like really smart. Like the interview I did yeah. with him is not up yet, but like when it's up, I uh, like go listen to it and tell me that you think teams like won't be blown away by this guy. <laughs> like he knows his stuff. He like deeply loves basketball. Um, I think with him, like what's going to be challenging is like the role he's had to play is going to be a little bit different than like what he's going to be asked to do as a six foot three guard in the NBA. Like he's not like a bad like playmaker for others. Like he's not like, uh, like he had a positive assist turnover ratio this year. Um, but he's not like Mr. Like run the pick and roll and make a bunch of reads. Um, he was mostly like run off of actions, like come off of the handoff and shoot a three or like spot up and shoot a three or like run a pick and roll. But we really need you to be the guy that scores. Like it was a lot of that kind of stuff. It's a yeah. year. I uh, scored 19.1 points per game, but shot like 40.9% from three on high volume in his first season at a high major program. Uh, one of those guys who's like a, a, a like quote unquote, like smaller guard, but he's like built like a tank, which is really important. Like super, super strong. Um, I thought about like, I would have taken him if you went smaller at all. Like I really yeah. like was thinking about like taking him where I took Malify at like the two guard spot. Uh, yeah. but your team was just so big that I was like, ah, like I need like my table setter. So I, I went in a different direction with that, but, uh, he's the guy that I like a lot too. That's in the field. Um, one other guard I want to throw out is like, I think Tyson Walker is like going to be really good at Portsmouth. Like, I don't, I don't see it yeah. as like an NBA thing. Cause he's so skinny, but I think he's the guy that's going to have like a huge game uh, at Portsmouth at some point. Uh, and I think like a sneaky name is Xavier Johnson from Southern Illinois. Yeah. There was a few guards. Um, yeah. Those, those two are good. I got two names um, and I'll give it back to you to turn for Xavier Johnson. But mm. uh, the other guard that I was going to throw out there was uh Vontaris Wolbright was going to be the other okay. one that I was considering. Yeah. So Wolbright has like die hard fans. Yeah. Uh, among basketball people. I don't see it with Wolbright. Like, so Wolbright is like one of these guys who ever just like 23, 12 and six. Yeah. Um, he doesn't shoot at uh, all. And it's like super heliocentric and he doesn't play defense. So for me, it's always been like, I, I get that he's talented. I just don't know. Like, what does this look like in the NBA when like, you yeah. have to be complimentary. I didn't know where I was going to go with the guards. Like I had to go through all of my guard evaluations for, because a lot of them can't shoot. Like a lot of the, a lot, like, of, the, them, the, yeah. a lot of the guards um, that are NBA prospects, like can't shoot uh, that are in this class. Like even Aaron Estrada is like, he, he was a guy that used to be a really big shooter, but like mm -hmm. his, his efficiency kind of went down this year um, at Alabama. AJ Hogard was a guy who's kind of like 34, 35%, but, not like super confident about you this never trust moving <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you never trust that santiago vescovy i was thinking more as like an off ball guard and even yeah. his three-point shot like for whatever reason has yeah, fallen weird. off he's, a cliff I, that's the guy where like, i feel like there's got to be injury stuff like yeah because he had a weirdly strange year like it, like it should be on I, the id network like what happened mm -hmm. to santiago vescovy's shot like that's in there um the last guy and if you would have grown a wild hair for whatever reason, Maxwell, and taken my guy, Joel Sor uh, Soriano, mm -hmm. I had a backup big in mind. And I okay. know you're going to love this guy. Jesse Edwards out of West Virginia. Jesse Edwards is good. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was really considering him. I thought that you were going to pair him with Pember. And I think mm -hmm. that you still could have gotten away with that. But Jesse is one of these dudes, man. So he's 15 points per game, eight rebounds. Um over one and a half blocks per game this year at West Virginia, but his two seasons at Syracuse, he was well over two and a half blocks per game, right? Mm -hmm. So he's a proven shot blocker. He's kind of been like uh, what I have in my notes is like a B-lister of big, of big men in, in college basketball yeah, for yeah, a while. Yeah. But he's always put up big numbers or solid mm -hmm. numbers, man. Um, he's in the 93rd percentile in total offense, and now I know that like analytics love like around the basket efficiency which he is by the way i mean yeah yeah percent on his field goals that's that's crazy he's a great lob threat he's coordinated too on those lobs he's not like one of these awkward like hashim the beat lob threats that like mm -hmm. hopefully if he like grows into his athleticism it gets there he's very coordinated dude i like his effort second effort pretty mobile on both ends has some good timings on blocks has a little bit of post moves but 
nothing that I'm wowed about. And he screens well, despite being listed at like what two fifteen. Yeah, so, he's listed real light. Yeah, I think that he's probably a little bit bigger than that, but. I don't know, man, like especially at the college level and like a five on five, I was really considering him because he is pretty mobile. And I think mm -hmm. that he's another one of these guys that I think NBA scouts are probably going to go down there and look at Jesse Edwards in a contest like this and be like, do we want to get some more reps of him like at these other combines? Like mm -hmm. there goes my uh... <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, you're good. I will just restore my confidence here real quick and my there abilities yep mm -hmm. there we go i'm back but yeah jesse edwards as like a uh, nba big i think that there's going to be some teams that might be able to talk themselves into more extended looks at jesse edwards for sure really good offensive rebounder mm -hmm. and a guy who like has the actual size and blocks a lot of shots like that like, it's like we talked about like sometimes like teams just want simple with their bigs and like that's him these long long arm yep. bouncy rebound shot block dunk and like that's that's it. Not a great free throw shooter. Need? Um, I was like a little surprised. I like one. I don't know. Like that West Virginia team had like so many things wrong with it this year that it's like hard to know how much to take away from this season, and it just stinks because it's like the first season you got to see him in like not zone defense a lot. Um, but yeah, I, he's definitely like a guy worth monitoring because if he does have a good week, like he's probably closer to what a lot of NBA teams are looking for in a big. Um, another big author out there is Brandon Carlson. Uh, from I was going to mention he's, him too, he's yeah. real old like he's like 25 um <laughs> but he's he's really good at shooting like they, so if you're a team that's like we want to play five out there's Brandon Carlson give him he's, a look yeah he's skinny like he's I think he's listed at like 225 or 215 something like that he's light um he's not a great rebounder but he's one of those guys like they, they that Davion Smith on their team is like one of those six foot guards who gets like eight rebounds a game a lot of the time yep um and then uh oh, we had a bit of a meltdown going on here bear with me i, just a sec. I know uh, how it goes man. so carlson took about five threes a game made about 38 percent of them this year and it's a pretty shot he can move into it he made a lot of his threes as a pick and pop guy he made a lot of his transition threes like i it's just hard to watch that guy play and not by the shot and he's pretty bouncy like he's one of those guys where the block rate's nothing crazy but you watch him play defense and it's like his rotation timing is really good. A lot of the time he gets off the floor super easy. Like he uses a lob target on offense. Like he is a, he's a good player who can do like functional skill stuff. I, I like Brandon Carlson. I, I get that he's older, but it wouldn't shock me if he's like the Nate Mensa of this year of like older than you would think big guy who ends up on a two way. And then there's like playing real minutes by the end of the year. There's a few good names left, man. Like Tyler Burton was a guy that I was in love with for years. And then he went to Villanova, which I thought was a good move. And then like had a not so good season. A uh, teammate of a guy that I drafted, Alan Flanagan. I've often loved him for a long time as well. Uh, Tristan and Aruna has got a lot of fans. I don't happen to be one, but he's he's a guy. That he's got to shoot. Like he's like really yeah. got to shoot. And he's a guy who's never shot. So it's just hard to get too excited. But he's a guy who does everything like the across the board production on Anarun is really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just for pro prospects, I should say uh, I'm I'm just not I'm just not there, man. But yeah, I don't have any more honorable mentions, Max. So yeah, so I had a couple. Um, Keelan Boone, the Boone that's like uh, a yes. shooter. Yeah, so there's the, the two Boone. Boone twins. Uh, there's the one that's like a small ball, ball five, and then there's uh, uh, so there's the, the Boone that's a small ball five, and then there's the other Boone that's more of like a twitchy wing that shoots threes and stuff. He's the twitchy wing that shoots threes. Um, solid defender still, like good mobility. Um, does a really good job of just covering ground, eating up space. And yeah, like just really interesting. He, another guy who's like really thin. So it's going to be interesting to see how he handles the physicality. If he does get like an Isaiah Crawford style matchup of like, you're being yeah. guarded by like the smartest man in the world who is also <laughs> like a tank. Like what, what are yes. you going to do? Uh, that's going to be interesting. And then like two more of like the Jameson battley, like shooter type guys, Alex Dukas and Kyle road. Uh, so Kyle oh, Rode yes, from Liberty good. Yep. is like, he's another one of those like just burly guys, like six, seven, really wide, really strong, very good passer, like almost like three to one assist to turnover ratio points throughout his college career uh, and a knockdown, knockdown guy, like 39% on like eight attempts per game is a leading option this year. So a guy who can really clearly shoot the ball. Um, and then Alex Dukas is a guy who's also like six, seven and really strong, solid decision maker, 
pretty heavy laterally for both of those guys. So like how they move is going to determine like, are they guys that get E10s? Are they the guys that can play themselves straight into a two way? Like we'll see, but yeah, those are the two other guys I thought about. I love it, man. So Maxwell, I think that's going to, that's going to do it for the inaugural, 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 inaugural. Then am I saying that right? Inaugural uh, sicko ball that we've had this year, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So you got a big meltdown. So I'm going to have you wrap up the show here. <laughs> yeah. Easy day. All right. So, First off, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I'm looking at the viewers right now and, you know, on, on X and on YouTube. That's incredible. Thank you all so much. Um, I know that Maxwell has got a fun piece coming out this week covering all the sickos that we talked about in more detail than, than you could just listen to on the pod. So you're going to want to look at that as a companion piece for for this podcast, right? Maxwell, that's coming out on Wednesday, right? If, um, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, so that'll be out Wednesday. And then I've got at least two player interviews that should be out Tuesday as well. I already interviewed Malphi Leon, so I drafted. Uh, but we've got Kyle Road coming out. We've got Quincy Oliveri coming out and potentially a few more. It's just going to depend on how things shake out yeah. schedule-wise for guys. Yeah, and right now, this time of the year, man, where like schedules get pretty crazy, not only for the players, but for us as well. My first piece uh, since my return is going to be dropping on Tuesday where I'm covering Iowa's Peyton Stanford. So you're going to want to look at that. Uh, the name of that article is a firm foundation really lean, leaning on the Sanford part of his last name. Right. So good play on words there. But otherwise, yeah, just continue everybody to um, like, share, subscribe, rate and review everything that we have going on over here at No Ceilings. Um, please share the podcast with your friends. Um, share our big boards, which are available at NoSeilingsNBA.com, as well as all of our articles. Uh, Corey just dropped the latest like draft uh, comparisons where it's essentially like a temperature check of how all the consensus big boards are feeling about players. So please go and check that out as well. And, you know, it's going to be time here soon for the NBA draft. So, you know, as you're continuing to get closer to the draft, you're getting ready to talk about all these things or all these players with your friends uh, at the Scuttlebutt. Just please continue to tune in. And, you know, we're going to have like some some pretty cool draft material dropping here soon. But that's pretty much going to do it for everybody here at No Ceilings. Uh, if you want to follow Maxwell on Twitter is going to be the best place to do that at Boundboards. Follow me on Twitter at Stephen G Hoops and at No Ceilings NBA across all socials for the rest of the team who just got done hanging out at the Hoop Summit up in um up in uh portland, portland. so yeah. you're going to want to check that out and get your drinks ready because you're going to have to take a drink every time you hear them talk about the hoop summit so they um, I, and i gotta say those guys killed the hoop summit yeah. coverage like oh, they dude, did a bunch awesome. of stuff on no ceilings plus so subscribe to no ceilings plus if you haven't already like there is some phenomenal coverage from them like daily daily updates so a lot of great stuff over there that you're gonna want to check out absolutely well maxwell that's gonna do it for us so let's say goodbye to the nice people all right. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Much love, y'all.